Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the cactus and the cactus that we're working on is the title of today's video. This one pattern has two of the cactus. One is the prickly pear and the other one is a classic cactus and today we're working on the one that is suggested in the video title. So this is working on a really kind of cool idea. You'll notice that there's two sizes of pots. That means that there's two sizes of soil. So you can mix and match whatever you would like to do. So if you have a three and one eighth pot or a three and seven eighth pot and we have two different size soils and I'll be covering both of the soil sizes in today's tutorial and then whatever the video title is it's going to be the same one that matches matches this video. So it's really not a hard thing to do. It's using a uh, lily sugar and cream yarn. It's a cotton yarn by yarnspirations.com and uh, it's something that you can really carefully look for. You can also use Bernat Handicrafter if you cannot find this brand as well. You're also going to need a four millimeter size G crochet hook today in order to do it and let's get started on doing the soil first. So here are the two different soil types. So you have the small and the large. You can see there's a bit of a significant difference between the two and you can choose the one that matches your lifestyle the most. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be making two sizes of soil. This is the large size and this is the small one over here. There is a significant difference between the two. So what we're going to do is that we have to do two sides of the soil and then put them together. So this is one half of the sm uh, small. I have to do another half and then sew it together. Stuff it first so that you have it firm and then this is used to sit inside of the actual um, pot and then it keeps the flower stabilized as it's sitting inside. So it's a really neat idea and so we just sew the flower right on top and you're good to go. So let's uh, get started on making the soil. Now the only difference of the soils are two rounds which are done right here as you see here but everything in the sides is exactly identical to each other. It's just a matter of stopping a little bit earlier when you're doing the small. So let's begin with the slip knot today and this is the uh, big or the small soil. Both of them start off the same way. So in round number five is when they deviate uh, from each other. So let's uh, begin with the slip knot on the hook. It never counts as one. We are just going to chain two. So one and two and we simply go to the first chain that is in the chain and we go to the first one and we're going to single crochet into that chain eight times and that's going to create a circle. So let's just count that out together. So we got one and two and and three, four and five, six and it's gonna be tight. This is gonna be seven and it's gonna be eight just like this. So now you gotta join it to the first one. If you're not sure which one it is just count back. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and that is where I'm going to join then to finish that round. So this is first round number one. So let's move on to round number two. So moving on to round number two we're going to build this up and get bigger. So we're gonna chain up one and right where we've done the same one is to join. I want you to put in two single crochets. So one and two. Everything's really tight right in the center but it will loosen up as you get and do more. So every stitch around is each gonna get two single crochets in it. So one and two and again this is for the big and the small version at this time. So just two single crochets in each one. It'll only take you a few minutes. These soils don't take very long to make period. And you're gonna go all the way around. So if you have eight single crochets in the last round so this time there will be eight um, groups of two single crochets if you're confused at any point. So you're gonna wanna count that to make sure that you're keeping in your balance and I've got one more to do. So you would have thought there's gonna be two more to do but there's actually only one because this one is part of this original. So you get to count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and I was counting the groups of two together. So then just join it to the beginning single crochet. So that was round number two. So let's move on to round number three. So continuing on working on both sizes of soil. This is round number three. Chain up one and we're going to single in the same stitch that we did the join with and here's the repeat pattern for this whole round. The next one is gonna have two single crochets in there. So one and two and then the one after that is only gonna be one single crochet into that one. Okay so the repeat pattern again. The next one is gonna have two single crochets and the next one only gets one. Please do that all the way around for round number three. 
as we come up all the way around the last stitch will be two single crochets into there. I've not done anything special. I'm just keeping in count to what I'm already established. So then you're just going to join it to the top of the first single crochet to complete off round number three. So that's what it looks like. A nice solid soil base at this point. So let's go on to round number four. Again both sizes are of the soil is going to be affected by this. So let's continue. So we're gonna chain up one and we're going to put one single crochet into the first one just like that. And then we're gonna put another single crochet into the next one. Okay so there's two sitting by themselves and this one here the third one is gonna have two single crochets into the same one. So the repeat pattern for round number four is that it's going to be one by itself, it's gonna be two by itself and then the next one has two into there. So please do that for round number four. So I'm coming up all the way around and the last stitch again will be two single crochets because I'm keeping the right counts and then I'm gonna join it to the first. So here's where the and let's just join it to the first single crochet. So here's where it's gonna separate then from the small soil to the large soil because now we're going to uh, carry on. So if you're doing the small soil you will not carry on any further to make this any bigger. You're just gonna uh, move forward and in this tutorial and I want you to move forward until we get to doing the sides of the of the soil. Okay so for those continuing we're gonna do a couple more rounds then of uh, making this bigger to do the large size soil. For those that are making their soil bigger then this is what you just do is just you just chain up one and then coming into the same stitch that you just did and you're gonna do a single crochet, you're gonna single crochet the next one and the next one after that. So you have three sitting by itself and then the next one will have two into the same one. So one and two. So the repeat pattern for round number five for the large soil is three single crochets by itself and then the next one is two single crochets into the same one. Please do that all the way for round number five if you're doing the large soil. So I'm coming up to the conclusion of round number five and the last stitch is gonna be two single crochets and I'm keeping that in proper count. So let's just join it to the first single crochet that was round number five of the large soil. So the large soil then takes another turn and we are going to do one more time to getting slightly bigger and then what we're going to do then is then starting the sides after that point. If you're doing the small one at that time then that's where you're gonna pick back up. So the large soil the last uh, revolution of growth is chain one and you're going to single crochet into the first one and into the next three. So one, two and three. So you have four single crochets that are sitting by itself now and the, the next one will have two. So one and two. So the repeat pattern just to recap quickly is one single crochet in the next four and then the next one has two single crochets into it. So please do that all the way around for the final round of growing it bigger for round number six. So I'm coming up all the way around and this is it for making the soil bigger. This is the large size soil and the last one will be have two single crochets into it in order to keep the proper count. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna move forward now and both the small soil and the large soil then we'll then complete the rounds that we have left. So the soil people the, for the small will carry on from this point forward. So regardless if you're working on the small one or the large one the next three rounds are going to be the same for all of you. So let's uh, begin doing the round number one. We're going to work on the back loops only and that's what's gonna create the bend that you see in the soil. Do you see that bend? That's what we're gonna be doing next and both sizes are, are affected by this. So you're going to chain one and all you're just gonna do is that if you're new to crochet there's always two loops that make up a stitch. So the front loop, the first loop towards you is the front loop and the other loop in the behind is the back loop up together they make up a stitch. So starting in the back loop of the same stitch that you just did the join with I want you to dive into the back loop only and I want you to single crochet. And I want you to continue to go into the back loops only and single crochet one into each. So both size soils are working in the back loops at this point. So it doesn't matter the stitch count going around you're still working in the back loop. So do that all the way around for the first round of doing the sides for your soil. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm still working in the back loops only for the first revolution and this will create the bend in the soil that you need. So once you come all the way around then you just join it to the top of the first single crochet that you started with and you're done. 
So regardless if it's small soil or big soil, both of them were done the same way. So the next two rounds are just very simple. You're just gonna chain up one and you're gonna do both of these rounds for me and you're gonna go into the very first one that does the attaching, okay? And you're gonna single crochet. So go into both loops at this time. So go into the stitch and just one single crochet into each and then when you get all the way back around, just join it with the slip stitch once again and chain up one and do one single crochet again one more time all the way around. So you just have to do two rounds of what you're seeing right now and then you're good to go. Your soil is then ready and you'll put it aside and you'll get that to go. So make sure you get that done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So as I come back around, I'm just going to join it and that's it. So this is considered the bottom of the soil. Okay, so let's just uh, trim this off and what I wanna do is that I wanna leave enough string here that we're going to use this as a tying string later with this or, or as a sewing string later. So what I need you to do is that I need you to make a double one of these. So make another one if you've done the top soil, make another one and if you've done the bottom soil, make another one and what you're going to do is that you're going to use then both soils here and you are going to put them together like so Okay, so you're just gonna sew around the outside and you're going to stuff it lightly here so that you have a nice solid base. So when it's sitting inside of the actual uh, container, it'll be nicely and joined. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to join these things. So if you're doing at this point, make sure you got two of them and then I'll show you how to join. So I now have my stuffing available from when I'm ready for it and I got more off camera that you can't see so it's just a handful. So what I wanna do is that I wanna put the two sides together so that it's facing down so it's gonna look like it's a cup. Okay, it's just like this. So all I just need to do is just I need to start up in the one that has the strand left and you just go into any one of them that's on the other side. Both are exactly the same size so you don't need to worry about it so much. So what you can just do is just kind of fold it up for now and just go across the stitch on the other side and then back into the other one on the other side and sandwich them together. This is called a whip stitch and all you're just gonna do is just move to the next one and the next one and continue to go all the way around and before you finish it off I need you to uh, throw some stuffing inside and make it nice and firm. Okay, so just uh, st uh, stuff it all nicely for you and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So let me just continue to do this off camera. So I'm getting close to the end and all I'm just gonna do now is this in the opening that is left, I'm just gonna start stuffing the polyfill in there just to make it nice and more firm. Now you can always pull out stuffing by using your crochet hook and trying to pull it out through stitches versus trying to put more in. So you're better off to overstuff than you are to understuff because if you never put enough in there then it's too late after that unless you have to take apart your stitches. So make sure that you got it nice and firm. Sometimes I always try to do it and then um, I realize that it's not firm enough and then it feels firm at the time but then once you start playing around with it, it feels like it's loosening off. So make sure you just uh, take your time in this process and make sure you stuff it to what you want. So now that I'm satisfied, I'm just gonna continue to sew it and then sew it completely shut and then I'm good to go and just fasten off your yarn. I'll show you how to stop your yarn so that it has a nice uh, seamless look to it as well and I'll see you there in just a moment. So once you come to the end, the best way to get rid of the loose end here is just to start going in and just make one tie. So just going into a loop and just kind of securing it like so and just pull through. That kind of locks it. Now the rules of crochet and knitting basically is if you hide your loose ends in into the actual fiber itself in three different directions. So one, come back in the other direction for two, Okay, getting right into the fibers and then go back in the other direction for three. It will never fall out on you. So now I can just safely cut it down right to the actual project itself. So both your soils should be done at the small or the thing just to roll it around. Just kind of fluff it up and now there is your base and now your flower is going to sit right in the center of this and this is just gonna slide into the pot. Now if this sinks too low into the pot you can always put stuffing underneath inside the pot in order to hold it up and it's actually pretty cool that way. So let's begin to work on our cactus next and so we're gonna work on the classic cactus and this is how it looks before it's sewn together to create the, the look that it appears when it's sitting inside 
of the pot. So it's a kind of a neat idea and you'll see that it's rounded off near the top. I'll show you how to do that, not a problem. And then there's a mini flower that goes with this in order to sit on top and I'll show you how to do that as well. And it's actually quite a neat idea. So let me just get the flower and it just sits on top like so. So let's uh, begin to do this and you're going to need your pattern I guess today and you just need to check off the rounds as you are the rows as you go. So let's begin to do that next. So let's begin to do the classic cactus. We're using the same size hook, hook a four millimeter size G. Create a slip knot to begin. So we're going to create this and the whole cactus is created up on in rows like this. So look at it from this point of view, not this point of view going up like that. So let's uh, begin and we are going to chain a total of 18. So just uh, uh, chaining, so just do like, let's do 18 together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So let's move on to the first row. So we have to get our pattern established first and this row number one is the only time you will do it like this. So you're going to go third chain from the hook. So one, two, and three. Okay, and we're gonna half double crochet. So wrap the hook and go into the back hump of that stitch or the half of the hump of the chain and go right in and pull through and you're gonna half double crochet. Just like that. So now what you have to just do is that in each one of the back loops of the chain just continue to half double crochet all the way down to the other side. And I'll see you at the end of this chain. So you will half double crochet right into the end of this chain. So now we're gonna turn and work. So rows number two through five is gonna be a repeat pattern. We need to do it a total of four times. So we're gonna do it once through and then you're gonna repeat it uh, three more times all the way through. So let's uh, begin row number two and we need to go into a horizontal bar. Now there's a description available on the pattern. Let me show that to you next and let me begin. So as we begin row number two, it's gonna ask us to go into the horizontal bar. So it's not the two stitches that are on the top. It's not the front loop or the back loop. It's the one straight underneath. So the very first one is gonna be this one right here and then it's gonna be the next. They have it moved over like this so that you can easily see it versus sitting right in there. So we wanna get for these. So our goal is, is to get uh, 14 half double crochets across all the way. There's a total of 16 just so you know. So you're leaving two half double crochets unworked and because of that it's gonna create a, a not right away but it will create what is gonna be peering of the of the turn that goes in towards the top. So let's begin to do that next. So here's a nice close up view of it and what we're going to do is chain two and it does not count as a half double crochet and as I already mentioned in the diagram, we need to go into the one that's straight underneath. So, so right on top, you'll see that there's two stitches. Okay, one and two. That's your stitch. Okay, so the front loop, back loop. That's not the one we want to go into. We want to go into the one that's horizontal right here. Okay, so as we play, we're just gonna go into these horizontals. Once you get started down the road, it gets a lot easier to see them. So we're gonna wrap the hook first. So it's still a half double crochet and all we're just gonna do is come down and get it by the front bar right there. And then we're gonna pull through and we're gonna half double crochet as normal. Okay, so the first one's always kind of the hardest to identify. So now that you're gonna move along, do you see where it is? So here is the stitches on the top. We're not touching those. Turn it over and see this one's already in. This is the next one right here. So let's wrap the hook first and then going into the horizontal going up through and then you just keep moving on. So just keep going to horizontals. Once you start knowing where it is, it's easy. So the first chain two never counts as a double crochet. So I have a total of three so far and I want a total of 14 and that's gonna leave two remaining stitches left at the end. So do this all the way until there's two stitches left empty and you can count 14 and it will be a lot simpler as well. So I've now just come over and I have 14 in and two that are left are left empty. So let's move on and we're going to go on to row number three. So row number three we're going to then just turn our work. Okay and then we're just going to chain two. 
So and that doesn't count as a double crochet. And it says one half double crochet in the horizontal pr uh, bar created below. So now we're gonna go in the horizontal bar once again and just coming in and you're gonna go all the way back across the row. So you don't have to stop earlier like you did before and continuing to go in the horizontal bar as a half double crochet right to the end. So this is row number three. So I'm coming all the way back to the beginning on the other side and I go right into that last one that is available again in the horizontal. And then that's it. So that was row number three. So row number four we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna not only come across what you already see but we're gonna be adding two stitches back in order to create the rounded shape that appears. So this will in the end will be dragged over and we'll start creating that the bend at the top of the cactus. So let's begin row number four. So row number four again we're doing chain two and go into the horizontal bar as you normally would have been doing. Okay, so you're just gonna continue to go across. So you're gonna go across all the way to you get all of these done. There's a total of 14 if you remember. And then what I'm gonna do is that once we get there I'm gonna show you what more needs to be do be, uh, more <laughs> what more needs to be done because there's two more stitches that need to be added in order to create the bend at the top of the cactus and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up close to the end and here's the final one and I wanna go right into the final one. So that's your 14th that's in there. Okay, so we're not quite done. So what we have to do is that we have to then put two stitches together. So what we're gonna do first time is that we're going to come in and we're going to come into this section right here. Okay, it's right to the end. Okay, just right here it's in the last row and we're gonna wrap and we're gonna go right into that section and pull through. But we're not done. We're gonna go to the next stitch that's available way down here, wrap it and pull through and go in and pull through and now you have five loops on your hook and you're gonna pull through all five loops. So you just made a two together and you're just filling in the spaces at the top. So in your last stitch all you just need to do is just kinda pull it apart and then just go into the horizontal bar on your very final stitch that was way down here and you're gonna pull in and then pull it together. And so that fills in all those spaces and that's what creates that rounded look. So let's do the final row at number five. We're gonna turn our work and we're going to chain up two and again in the horizontal bar. So the horizontal bar is right down in here of their very first one. And you're gonna go all the way across. So then go into the, your next horizontal. So all the way across this time. So this is row number uh, uh, five. So we're gonna repeat then rows number two through five three more times and this is how we did it. So I'm going to get you started just to make sure that you know what you're doing with the first one because you have to stop two stitches earlier again to create the gapping spaces so that you can uh, get that rounded effect at the very top. So let's just go all the way across for round number five and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I'm all the way back across for row number five. So this is what it looks like. So you can see that the ridging is picking up on the other side just like this and this is what creates that fabulous shape of the of the typical cactus. So now we have to go back to repeat rows number two through five three more times. So let's just start and get you started. So we're gonna chain up two and this time remember the, what we did in number two. We stopped two stitches earlier. Remember how many stitches there were? There was 14. So chain two doesn't count as one of them. So you're just gonna half double crochet on the bar again for 14 in a row. So let's just count that out. So this is two and three. That's four. That's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12, and 13, and one more is 14. So there's two stitches left that are not touched right here, one and two. So then you just turn your work then and go again and you're gonna go all the way back and then you're go that was gonna be row number three and then you go back to number four which was how we decreased it again 
uh, to make these come together and then you'll do number five and then you repeat it all over again. So please uh, continue to repeat uh, rows number two through five three additional times and what you will end up with is something like this at the end so that you see that they're all coming together at the top just like this. So I'll see you at the end of this and make, make sure that you leave enough yarn out at the end to be able to sew in your piece and I'll see you there in just a moment. Just as a quick reminder if you need to see what those rows were again just reverse the video and go through rows number two through five all over again. So once you get all the way done you're going to have a panel that looks like this. So it's gonna be rounded and as you fold it it should have a nice uh, tip at the top. So what I want you to do is leave about 12 inches of string here. It says eight inches but you can go 12 it's up to you and then you're just gonna fold it around and you're just gonna come into the stitches that match each other all the way across and just come across and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna whip stitch. So you're just gonna go back over the top, go into the next stitch available on the other side and go into the next stitch available on this side and start putting it together. And then after that then we're going to stuff it lightly and then we're going to sew it then to the top of the, the actual um, soil that we have. So just whip stitch yourself all the way across back up the top. So I'm coming up near to the top and I'm just following that seam line all the way to the top. No big deal. And then you're gonna use your stuffing to get that right shape that you want and you can always just squish that, squish, squish that stuffing around in order to get the shape that you want for the top. So continuing just to join with the whip stitch. The nice thing about it too is that you're gonna have a flower that sits on the top of this thing so if your sewing is not that hot then <laughs> you can always cover it with the flower. I think we've all kind of done things like that in our life where we cover something that we shouldn't just because. So I'm just gonna just let's see what the shaping looks like at this point. It looks like it's pretty accurate and what I'm gonna do then is that I'm just going to then get rid of this yarn. So all I'm just gonna do is just go in and I'm just gonna form a loop and catch it and then pull tight and then I'm gonna go in and out of the work just like I did with the soil back and forth three times. So one two and three. Okay, so now I can cut that right down and I can grab my stuffing at this point and just get the right shaping that I need for that. Okay, and you can actually kind of see so when I get my soil it'll just sit, sit right in the soil like this. So let me get my stuffing next and let's be right back. So I've just stuffed my cactus now. It's pretty firm. It's not too crazy. It's not like it's rock hard and what we have here is that we want to put it onto the soil. So now you're gonna grab your soil base and using a darning needle and you're going to do a whip stitch and you're just going to go right down into the middle of your soil like so. So you're gonna sew right directly to the middle here and uh, that's good to go. Okay, so I want you to do that. I'm not gonna do it here on camera with you today because I wanna use the soil for another cactus project that I'm gonna use. And um, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show the flower on how that's done and you're gonna attach your flower right to the top of your cactus. So this cactus has a flower that's attached and you can uh, decide to, if you wanna put that on or not and just leave an extra long string so that you can sew it to the top, top of your cactus when you're done. So it's actually kind of neat and then you just shape it in order to get the look that you want for the top of your cactus. So let's begin and show you how to make one of these flowers. So let's create the flower. We're gonna start off with the slip knot and just using this beautiful yarn here and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four. So this is gonna count as a double crochet and also the main center just so you're, you're keeping count. So you're gonna put five double crochets in the first chain way down right where I'm pinching right where I'm moving and you're going to put in five double crochets right down there. So just go one and two. We're creating the center of the flower and then three and then four and five. So with that whole chain that we started with over here, so that's gonna count as one of them. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're just going to join it to the beginning top of the first chain to form the center of your, your flower just like that. So let's move on to round number two which is the final round. 
So each one of these six spots all the way around are going to be part of the petal. So there's six petals all together. So let's start off the first petal. We're going to chain two and then in the same one that you did the join there's going to be three double crochets. So let's do that. So one and we have two and three and then once you have those three done you're going to chain two and slip stitch into the same one that you've been working with. So it's a lot going on in one particular stitch. So once you get that done you move to the next one. Okay, so you move to the next one and you slip stitch first. So slip stitch over and then chain two and then three into that same one. Three double crochet I mean. One, two and three followed by chain two and slip stitch into that same one. I'll show it to you one more time. So you're gonna do this a total of six times. So let's slip stitch to the next one to start. Chain two. Okay, three double crochet. One, two and three followed by chain two and slip stitch into that same one. So now you're halfway around. I want you to finish the other three on your own. So I'm all the way around now. I have a total of six petals and then all I'm just gonna do is just leave enough of a strand here that you can use that as a darning uh, needle um, strand to, in order to do it so you don't have to do another one and then you're just gonna pull through the final. Okay, that was a slip stitch that was left and now you're just gonna shape it. So the original that you started off with you can just trim that down. So using a darning needle all you're just gonna do is that you're just gonna take that strand. Now you are close to the outside of this so what you wanna do is just glide this strand closer to the center. So just glide it up underneath the stitch work on the back side of, the, of it. And you can tell which is the back side because they're folding up towards you at this camera. Okay, so that's the, that's the good side. So I'm just gliding it up on the back side so that I'm more into the middle. And then I'm just gonna take the top of my cactus here and then I'm just going to go in diagonally across the cactus. And then because it's the same color I can go up through the flower and then back down. And just kind of peel that flower back in order to make sure it gets into the stitch work and behind. So I might just wanna do that maybe twice, maybe even three times just to make sure depending on where you're putting this. Uh, chances are it's just gonna be somewhere sitting on a maybe a counter or a windowsill or whatever that you want in your home or it could even be in your office on your desk. It's actually quite cute. And then once you're satisfied with that just then tie it up underneath the flower and then nobody will ever see where you stopped and started. So remember what I showed you on the soil and also on the cactus if you go back and forth three times within the stitch work it should never fall out on you. And then you can trim that safely down. Okay and then you can just shape it and etc. So then remember that you just still have to sew, uh, sew this if you haven't already done to your soil and then therefore this cactus would be considered done. So you just soil it, uh, sew it down then with the whip stitch and then you can just insert this whole thing into the flowers uh, pot and then you're good to go. So it's actually kind of a really neat idea and I think it's actually really quite super cute and I think that you'll enjoy it at the same time. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. We'll see ya. Bye bye.